Some time ago, I introduced to you two stoves from the Swiss company Pico Grill. And since that video has been released, the owner of the company has sent me two more stoves, the two largest in his lineup. Well, today I'm going to bring you the second largest of, that, of those stoves, and you'll see it is quite a large stove. And this is the Pico Grill 498. If you're interested in hearing more about this stove, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to declare that this stove was sent to me for testing and review by the owner of the company. I did not pay for it. However, I'm receiving no compensation for the making of this video or from the sale of any of these stoves. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we'll go down to the area on the ground here where I'm going to build my fire. I'm going to assemble the stove. I'll give you close-ups as I do. We'll go over the specifications for the stoves as well as is, is key features and then of course we'll get a fire built and I'll get some lunch on. So to begin everything that arrived in this package came in at 904 grams or 33.9 ounces but let's open it up and I'll show you what you get for all that weight. Now this is something extra I'll mention in a minute it's just another one of those barbecue uh, mats that I sometimes use to put on the ground. So you do get information on the stove as well as directions on how to assemble it. Uh, they're handy, they really are, because they should, they give you some hints that will save you just a little bit of experimenting to get it together. Not that it's difficult, and actually it's very easy once you understand how it goes together, but they're all done in pictorial grams or pictures, so it, it's very helpful to have. You get not one, but two good heavy stainless steel grills. I'll show you how those are used in a minute. You get a, they call them skewers, but they can also be used for a pot support. It could even be used for uh, an alcohol stove. In fact, this is identical to the one that's used in the two smaller stoves. And a uh, trangia will mount and sit in between those bars just nicely. So we'll set that up as well. And finally, this came in the package. Well, not that I got to show you the stove itself, but this is a quite, kind of a really cool tool. My wife said it looks like a set of lobster claws. Being from the East Coast, of course, that's the first thing, thing we see here. It's a set of tongs, grippers, whatever you want to call them. It can be used for a number of things. Well, obviously, turning your food. It can be used for managing the fire, moving coals around. It can be used for taking the grates, as you'll see, taking the grates on and off the fire and adjusting their heights. Yes, there are two heights adjustments on the stove which is kind of nice so that came with as one of the accessories this is the fire grate you might call this the main body of the stove that is where the fire will be built inside of this but you first need a frame to put it in and this is the frame just this simple now it doesn't really matter which way you fold it because it works out just fine and the frame is that. That's all there is to it. So here is the stainless steel frame. I will give you some close-ups as we go forward because it's of interest to know where the stove actually lines up and hooks on. But let's bring the fire grate back in. So just a couple of comments on the fire grate as I assemble it. You can see it is hinged together. You could take it apart, but it would take some work to do so. But it's not going to fall apart on its own, which is what's important. The edges are sharp but not that sharp let's put it that way I'm not going to cut myself on it I'm running my finger across it now and you can see but they are a little bit sharp so that's something to be aware of now yes this stove does require some assembly but as you'll see it's very very easy and goes together very quick and just to make the point it is minus seven degrees Celsius not very cold but, uh, you know, I wanted to do this with bare hands because uh, just to show you that it can be done in cold weather with bare hands. So what you'll see on either side of the stove are some notches, cut in little keyhole notches, both sides. They are going to line up with spots on the frame. And you start by bending the stove down just a tiny bit, line up the notches on one side, push it into place. And they'll lock in on the other side. That's it. That's the whole stove assembled. It becomes very stable at that point, and you're ready to build a fire in it. Now, once you get your fire established in it, here's what you're able to do with it. So I'll start with the two grates. There are two positions, as I mentioned. You can 
put a grill on one side at the lower position. You can put them both on that lower position if you want, or you can move them both up on top to the higher position. Of course, you could do one on the bottom and one on the top, whatever combination you feel is gonna work for whatever it is you're doing. And I think this is one of the key features I like about this is I can do more than one thing at a time. In fact, I will be doing exactly that. I'm gonna do some grilling and some baking when it comes to making my lunch. Now, here is the skewer slash pot stand slash trangia alcohol stove holder. And this lays across the grates and you can put it on top like that and support a pot or you can put it down a little closer to the bottom if that's where you want to put it and do exactly the same thing. If you were going to use this with the trangia, you would use it on this lower level and of course then you could use one of the pots right above it and you're going to come in just over an inch, inch and a quarter. I'll just be precise and put that in the video description as well. So that's your options. Okay, a couple of comments and then we'll go on to the key features and specifications. First off, I think it's obvious that this is an open fire. It is elevated off the ground and that has some real advantages, but it still is an open fire. So you do have to set up somewhere where you know you have a fire safe surface. I've got frozen ground to work with, so I'm going to assume that's pretty fire safe. It is also subject to wind, so find yourself in a nice sheltered area when you go to use this. But the real advantages are you're off the ground you're not being affected by the cold ground underneath. You've got your fire a little bit higher, so I have it sitting on snowy frozen ground right now. It's ideal for a setup like this. I don't have to worry about putting a base down and, and building a fire on that and the cold affecting it. There is sufficient air through flow coming through the bottom of this grate. However, coals could still fall through and some heat could transfer down, although you're still three or four inches off of the ground. Again, I'll put that measurement in the video description. And you, still have to be cautious of what you have underneath it but uh, you know this time of year and not so much but in the summertime it is a good idea it's a recommendation by the makers that you have a piece of uh, aluminum foil or something that you can put underneath this stove just for an extra layer of protection this is one of those barbecue grill grates or what do you call them mats i guess from the dollar store and i've been using these quite a bit less lately to see what the limitations are and the value of carrying something like this this would be ideal for putting underneath this as you can see it's big enough the whole stove will sit on this so if i was working at a picnic table not likely but on the ground somewhere where it's uh, you don't want hot coals falling through or heat transferring down through then this would make a great base on the bottom okay let's go over a few of the specifications. So I mentioned the total package weight was 904 grams, but what you're looking at right here, which is the stove itself, comes in at 490 grams or 17.3 ounces, hence the name, the Pico Grill 498. It's right in that that weight. All right, very quickly, I'll just give you the weights of the accessories. And again, I'll list them in the video description. So the skewers themselves come in at 1.3 ounces or 37 grams. The grates come in at 4.8 ounces or 136 grams. And the tongs come in at 1.6 ounces or 45 grams. So you can pick and choose which ones you want to take with you. You don't necessarily have to take any of them, but uh, maybe only one grate, the skewers, the tongs, maybe not the tongs, up to you. I think they're light enough and handy enough and to give you the options to give you the versatility that it's, you know, the extra weight isn't uh, all that much of a, a burden to take along. In the assembled state as it is now, we have 16 inches from edge to edge, 10 inches, 10.3 inches wide, and at the top here it measures up at eight and, and a half inches. So it is a good size fire pit. Now, some what are some of the key features? Well, I think probably, and this is important, and you'll hear me repeat this, if you haven't already heard it once, you're gonna hear it again. This was made in Switzerland. It was designed in Switzerland and is made and is shipped from there. If you're not purchasing from one of the sites that I list in the video description, then you're not getting an authentic Pico Grill. You're getting a, a Chinese made clone. So uh, that's, that choice is up to you. But if you want to support the original designers and makers of this, use one of the links that I provide in the video description. This specific stove was designed to be for two to six people. Uh, you're going to see that I can make maximum use of this in uh, just by myself, but you could really do quite well with two people, right up to six people, as it says. It is constructed from a very lightweight, thin, yet very heat-resistant stainless steel. 
What's interesting is this is designed that it will support up to 15 kilograms or 33 pounds in weight. You could probably get a Dutch oven on top of this thing. I'm not sure that it's something I would do because, of course, why are you carrying an ultralight uh, stove into the woods and a Dutch oven? But you could. I'm just saying that there is that much weight. What they do recommend is the largest pot that you use on this would be a three liter pot and it will go on quite easily and you'll have lots of excess capacity for that. I think you could probably go larger than three liters. That's just what the manufacturer um, recommends using. Uh, one of the things I realized right away is the minimum amount of wood processing that you can do. So here's an idea. This is some oak that I cut up just a few minutes ago and split out. Uh, there's some of the size of the sticks that I'm going to be using and they are, well, almost 14, 15, 14 inches long. So you can minimize the amount of work you do to feed this and you can get in some bigger pieces of wood. Hence have a longer burning, hotter, fire with create some greater coals for coals for grilling with. Um, one of the kind of the cool things I would not have seen this myself if I had not uh, been pointed out to me I have to grab the skewer here is right on the outside let's do it from this side the little notches that hook on to the frame of the stove are actually also designed so that if you've been using this for grilling, barbecuing, sausages like I am going to do today and they get a little gummy, you can run them through that little notch to clean any guck or goo or anything burnt, burnt residue on them and before putting it away in the package. So also cool is once you're finished you, got, you could end up having some dirty grills and the, the skewers and everything. Put them right in the middle fold it all together and it keeps your pack your package clean the one that came, that it was stored in because you're keeping all the dirty sides facing each other the two dirty sides of the grill or the fire grate as well as the grills and everything are, are in between those two sides keeping the inside of your package clean let's see if there's anything else that i want to be able to give you before moving on Oh, yeah, and this is one thing. This is obvious, and it's never that much of an issue for me, but it is good to know that if you're all said and done, you've uh, finished your lunch, and you've still got some coals there, and you have a safe place to dump them so that you can make sure they're out, this will cool off in an average of 60 seconds. Now, I'm saying an average because I think today this will cool off a lot faster than 60 seconds. But because of the nature of this thin stainless steel, it's going to cool off very quickly. You can get it packed away and you can get yourself ready to go back on the trail. All right, I think that's everything that needs to be said about this stove setup. Now all we need to do is get a fire built in it and we'll get some lunch started. All right, I've moved myself around just a little bit so that I can... Uh, Get the best lighting angle to work from. Uh, that is quite a bit of birch bark. I don't think I'm going to need all of that. It's always good to hold a little bit back. My tiniest kindling will be the under branches from a spruce tree here. Save a few of the bigger ones for the next step. So I expect this is going to really flare up when I first get it going. Cause a lot of flame. But it'll also burn out fast, so I'm going to have to be ready with my next layers of fuel. Alright, that should be a good way to start. Take that off for one second. You may not have seen, I mentioned in another video that I've been playing with this lighter, the SOL, or Survive Outdoors Longer, electronic lighter. It is a uh, plasma lighter, a little bit of dirt in there. I've been trying to give it some, uh, this is, was not a, per or sorry, not a given to me, I was, well it was, it was a birthday gift, not a, uh, sent by anybody else. Bridge Park is cold. All right. Here comes the smoke, as promised. Ooh, some of this wood is not as good as it could be. A 
This is as close to an open fire on the ground as you're going to get with a wood stove. I mean, it's a, it's a fire pit and a good sized one. It has all the advantages of an open fire and the enjoyment. The heat that's radiating off this will be excellent. But it has advantages that open fires don't have. The ease of setting it up, not looking for a place where you have to worry about or be concerned and about uh, finding, you know, a good place to set up that's safe as far as the fire goes. I'm noticing that some of this wood is cold and it's snapping, but that doesn't snapping doesn't always mean dry. So I want to get a good amount of heat and flame going here before I start putting on some larger pieces of wood. All the wood here is literally picked up off of the forest floor, shook out the snow. Not the best wood in the world, but it's what I had. However, my larger fuel came from dead standing that I cut down and split. One of the advantages not mentioned already, like an open fire, you can get a good amount of fuel on this and save yourself the effort of having to constantly feed small sticks once you've got a good fire established, especially in the winter time. The heat from the coals will make it easier to keep going and if it dies down, will make it easier to uh, build back up again. All right, so as you can see, it is catching on. It is a little bit slow to get going. So what I'll do is I'll let this fire build. I'll get some of my uh, bigger pieces of hardwood on this and then we'll get ready to cook some lunch. So this is the first time I've been used this stove. It's functioning the way I had anticipated it to. A few things I'm noticing about it. The coals, as they develop in the bottom, have a tendency to want to move into the center a little bit under gravity, I'm guessing. So if you want to distribute the coals a little bit for grilling purposes, then like any fire, I guess, you're going to have to do that manually and just get the heat where you want it to be. So a little bit more work in terms of fire management than it is with small stoves, but only from the point of view that you have to position the fire. Small stoves, you're just constantly, you know, maybe it's only one position that you can put a pot or a pan on, but you're constantly feeding sticks in. All right, so this is, uh, what am I going to do? I think I'm going to use the far end of this for, I think I'll start off at the lower level, for some baking. So, a little different. Oh, oh, almost lost that into the fire. So this is a bannock. I'm trying to show this to you without having my fans over the fire. So I just made myself a bannock, very simple bannock with the ketogenic type ingredients and it's got a lot of cheddar cheese wrapped up in it. And uh, you know, I think I changed my mind. I was going to do it on this piece of barbecue matting on top of a piece of tin foil and then put something on top of it to retain the heat. I think I'm gonna go right on the grill like that. So how am I retaining the heat? <laughs> it doesn't look like it, but this is my Uberlieben Kessel Titanium. My plan is to put that down upside down and use these fire tongs to put some coals up on top. Now, since I don't have anything underneath it and it's receiving direct heat from the uh, fire, I am going to have to keep an eye on this to make sure I don't burn it. Now, let's see. On this side, even though there's a little bit of flame and that's not ideal, I am going to start my sausages because by the time they start to cook up, they will die down. I'm going to start these off at the higher level, above the flame, well above the flame, so they're not being directly in the flame and getting all smoked up. So, 
Yeah, so what's kind of cool about this, and I'll demonstrate, actually I think I can probably demonstrate this even while I'm using or having those two things on. So here's the other grill. I'm going to get it in on the lower level. Now, obviously, if it sits there for any length of time, it's going to get very hot. Yes, you could grab it with a leather glove, but these tongs work well for lifting as well. And that's part of what they're designed for. You can move it from the lower level to the higher level, back and forth as you need to. But I'm using the tongs right now for managing the coals. All right, well, there's nothing left to do here for a little while other than just manage these things that are cooking. I'll bring it back and show you the finished product. I'll put a pot of water on for coffee, and then we'll close out with a few more comments. All right, since this is the first time I use this stove, I still have some learning to do. Uh, the sausages came out perfectly. I'm quite happy with those. Let's put those into my plate. Yeah, they... Uh, Mm, they look marvelous, in fact. However, the bannock, that's a different story. So, let me get rid of the coals off of this. What happened was, my first inclination was to use the tin foil and uh, grill mat underneath the pot. I should have went with that because what happened was, the fire suddenly moved down the sticks underneath the open bottom of the grill and as you can see the bannock got a little burnt on top so when I lifted it off and I tried to flip the bannock it was stuck to the grill so had I used this grill mat and tin foil from the beginning I don't think I would have burnt now the bannock is cooked so I'm quite happy with that let's see if I can manage this off of the stove without burning myself put it into my plate oh yeah yeah that's so there you go. There's the other side of the bannock that wasn't directly on the grill. So you can see it's baked nicely, but the part that was on the grill. So lesson learned here is go with your first indication. There was a lot more heat and this would have moderated the heat. I could may have been able to use that alone or that by itself. I could even put a small metal plate there on, on the grill and did the grilling or the baking right on that. I just try to go a little lighter weight today and try something a little bit different. But other than that, man, I can't tell you how great it is to use something, a stove that's more like an open fire than anything else. As you can see, I've still got all kinds of coals. And if I just huddle those together a little bit, I'm going to throw another stick on. Because what I'm finding is it's giving off a good amount of heat. So I can sit here, enjoy my fire while I have my lunch and then of course I can get some water on have some coffee and we'll be able to wrap this video up all right so I've had my coffee the fire's gone out what was left of the coals the swamps right here and there was some open water and I just dumped the, the coals in that and it is cold to the touch just as it should be no I just wanted to demonstrate a couple things as I take it apart no, it comes apart just as easily as it went together. And first thing I want to demonstrate is I did get some sausage fat and stuff on the edges of the skewer. So, I mean, it should still be cleaned properly when I get home, but it does take off the, the bulk of it. I'm going to put the frame aside just uh, to show you. And put the grills inside. Actually, only one of them was used. And the skewer fold it over. Now, nothing inside the little envelope gets dirty. Perfect. The frame just folds up, goes inside. What's still outstanding? My grill that I did not use is inside. And the tongs. Love these. These are really <laughs> cool. There we go. All finished. So let's wrap up with a few closing words. All right, a few closing words for the Pico Grill 498. Uh, so yes, this was a first used video. It wasn't a long-term review video. So 
in all honesty, I have to use it a number of times before I can give it a full endorsement. But I based my remarks on the experience I had with the two smaller versions of the Pico grills in that they've just they've exceeded expectations. They're so well designed, so well put together, very, very clever, very lightweight, very compact, very easy to use, all the things that I've said about them before. All those words can be used to describe the 498 as well. And I did say I have a larger one, which I'll bring you before long and demonstrate it's almost twice the size of this stove. You're, you're gonna be impressed with that, I'm sure, when you see it. So what can I say about it? It goes together very easily. Not surprising in the way it is designed. Um, it works very effectively as an open fire pit, yet it is versatile enough that with the way the fire, uh, not the fire grates, but the grills can be adjusted two different sides at two different levels, as well as the skewer can be used as a pot support. It can be used as a skewer, of course, and it can be used to um, hold the trangia if you're not ready to have a fire or you're finished your fire, you just want to bring some water to a boil. Very, very functional little stove. Um, I did like the way that you could put all the dirty components into the center and put it away in its envelope so you're not getting the envelope all dirty. I mean, I will have to clean it up when I get home a little bit, of course, before next use. It did not take a real set. Now, what I mean by that is if you look at the original video with the two smaller stoves, uh, after the first use, they the heat had caused the metal to take a shape, a kind of a spring open type of shape. In fact, it worked easier after the first fire. The second and subsequent fires, the thing actually almost just sprung open into shape the moment I took it out of its package. This took a very small set, and I had a good hot fire going in this. What that tells me is that that was taken into account in the design and that the small set that it take in no way impairs its function or putting it away. Like it's no thicker now than it was when I first brought it out into the woods today. I will be doing more fires in this obviously as well as the larger one and then I can probably give it a more of a long-term endorsement. But as I'm saying, I can't imagine that there's anything will happen to the stove over the long-term. Uh, using it the way I did today, uh, yeah. Now, what's left to do with this that I could try? I will consider using wood pellets in it. It's not really designed for that, but I expect that that V-shape to the fire grate might allow for it. It'll probably work with charcoal, chunk charcoal. I may try that, but again, it's not designed for that. So if I do and it works, it's a bonus, but that's not what this is. This is a fire pit, a small, lightweight fire pit. The basic stove weighs one pound or just over one pound at 490 grams. That may seem a bit heavy compared to some of the other stoves I've, I've, I've used, especially the smaller versions of this. But when you think of it, look at the size of this stove. It's like having at least two stoves side by side, the way that you can adjust the height, put multiple pots on, put multiple, do multiple things at the same time. With the added components, it did come to just about two pounds, but those added components were things that you likely would have had for other stoves anyway, like the grills and, all the, and the tongs, they were bonus. Did I need to have them? No, I could have operated this without those tongs, but wow, they're, they're too nice to use to leave at home when you, when you can bring them with you. So compact, so lightweight, and so effective. Okay, I think I've gone on enough about the Pico Grill 498. What I would invite you to do now is to put any comments you have or any questions you have in the comments section below this video. And as I mentioned, when I first opened this video up, I will put all the information about this, the specifications and all the key features in the video description, as well as where you can purchase this. And once again, I need to point this out. There are some very close copy clones of this available on AliExpress and on Amazon. They are not the original. I will give you the only places that you can order the original from the Swiss maker so that if you're interested in purchasing an original and supporting the Swiss maker of these stoves, then that's where you need to purchase them from. So basically that's all I have for now. What I would ask you to do is what I always do, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.